Hello YouTube, Triumph Guy here today and I'm going to be doing a cam belt, or timing belt and water pump on this uh, Renault Clear 1.4 1999. Um, I will be writing up some notes on this job so then you've got the rough order with um, some torque specs so you can print that out at home. But uh, what I'll do is once that's ready I'll put that in the comments section and where you can find that information. First thing we're going to do is drain the coolant so we're going to undo this cap he says. Put that on the scuttle panel and then undo this valve here which uh, just takes a screwdriver or if you're lucky which i'm not you can do it by hand we're going to be draining the uh coolant from the bottom radiator hose okay and we're going to access that from underneath uh this side the passenger side and up sweet uh, there you go so it only needs to go two turns so one two that's so these may have an additional um sort of bleeder screw on there and some may have one down there okay and the, them bleeders look like these these little caps so to get to that pipe it's really it's actually quite awkward um the bottom of these kits are like 30 odd quid i'll put a link in the description and this is the part of the kit i'm using basically it's a hose clamp but it means that we can get in a tight space which is just there you might be able to see it um just to get that hose clamp off alternatively you could start stripping stuff down to get to it um, or drain the coolant from an alternative position. Next, we're gonna wing this side off, which is the engine mount side off. Wing that off, jack it up, put on axle stands, and then we'll get on to the next step. Next, remove the inside wheel arch. There uh, should be a series of sort of, uh, this one's a Phillips, um, and then these sort of clips here. Um, and then, yeah, that should be pretty much it. But I need to remove this half of the wheel arch, not that half. Right, for some reason, the camera won't really focus in. I get a screwdriver just underneath it. Right, and just tease it off a little bit. And then if you have got one of these tools, uh, which is in that kit, just basically put underneath there and then squeeze it off. It should, with a bit of persuasion, come off. So on some of these cars, this is plastic. You can also remove this, but not on this one, it's metal. Um, so we've removed as much as we can, which gives us access. Uh, and now we're going to try and remove the serpentine belt. So I actually haven't seen my variation of serpentine belt on these cars before. And I think that's because it is a, a Lys, I think it is. Um, which I think means more premium model. So this one's got aircon, uh, which is fairly impressive for a 1999 uh, budget hatchback. This belt comes all the way up here. So what we need to essentially do is get some pictures of the belt and see where it goes. So then when we refit it, we're not getting confused. The light's pretty awful. As you can see just down there, that's the tension. It goes round this air conditioning presser. And then in there, it goes round another pulley and then back up on itself towards the sort of up end of this and then back round. So it sort of goes along the two main bottom ones, underneath the tensioner, around the aircon, down, up, and then back around like that. So it's quite a weird sort of design. So to remove it, what we're going to need is a 13 mil. Some of these as well have like ones where the tension is like bolted in, but on this one it seems to be like that. So you put that on the actual... Oh, God. Let's get this camera good. So you've got the crankshaft pulley and then just above it up there, you got that. Get the 13 mil on it, and then as you can see, it moves. And then you can remove the belt. We need two hands for it though. I removed it off the crankshaft pulley. I was gonna remove the whole belt, but then I realized that I wouldn't be able to get back on because them series of pulleys towards the aircon unit were really, really tight. So at this point I'm not replacing a certain time belt. I would recommend doing it um if you're not and you take it fully off you need to draw arrows on its direction of travel next we're going to remove um this um crankshaft pulley bolt now there is a, a few things which i'm going to show you first of all if you don't have an impact you can try and lock it off by the starter or you can put it in fifth gear drop the car down back onto uh this wheel with obviously the wheel on uh, turn the wheels that way to give you access Show you the last bit. on some of these cars there is a little 
flanking plug down there which you can remove to lock the crank off but on this one and i've seen on many of the other 1.4s there isn't okay so don't worry about that Now we're just going to replace the bolt. So, which is quite cool. I haven't even started turning the engine over, and that's the crank timing mark. You've got three marks here, and it lines up with that one there. But that, well, we haven't started timing the engine just yet. So that's jacked up. Um, obviously, if you've only got one trolley jack, that's fine. Just replace that with an axle stand, um, and then. I've got a two ton bottle jack under there on near the sump plug. Just don't put it on the sump plug, a bit of wood in between. And it's just jacked up ever so slightly just to take the strain off the, off the mounts. <laughs> Next, we're gonna remove all this stuff. First of all, move this out of the way. Yeah, that should be all good. This pipe, yeah, move that around. Okay, and don't forget to and just, I've just popped it there, and then we're going to remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts. So all we're going to do is crank this. So that mark, yeah, which someone's kindly uh, put a bit of tip hex on, goes to this mark here, okay? But there is a little indent there. So we're just going to get out 18 mil again, set the ratchet to righty tighty, and just go on this bolt and manually crank the engine around. Okay, should be fairly stiff, but not crazy. And it will randomly get lighter every now and again. That's just when the engine's opening up its certain valves. Important that you only crank this clockwise. And if you go past the mark by a considerable amount, then um, go at a full revolution again. There it is aligned. Yeah, we're just gonna leave it there, okay? So there's now uh, two covers we've got to remove. Okay, so we've got the top cover and the bottom cover. Um, I believe these are five eighths or 16 mil. And then on the bottom of the top cover, they are 13 mil. So this is the bottom cover with the three bolts. So I'm just gonna put that somewhere safe, like that. And there's the uh, top cover. So the bolts don't get mixed up. Um, I've just put them back in their original holes. Um, no, 13, 13, 13. That one's half threaded. The other two 13s are like that. And five apes just at the top there, or 16 mil. So as you can see down the bottom, that's the crankshaft pulley. There is the uh, tensioner wheel, camshaft, um, and the water pump there. So. As you can see, at the bottom of the engine, bottom of the camshaft pulley, there's a white triangle, okay? And that needs to line up these white marks here. So what happens is this will rotate twice every time that rotates once, the camshaft, crankshaft pulley. So I need to rotate the crankshaft pulley one more time to get these two to align. And then we're gonna double check the timing that they're both lined up to their correct marks. Now, as you can see, they're lined up, and so is the um, crankshaft pulley as well, so that is good. So, although this car is uh, 26 years old, it's the third cam belt change that it would have had, and um, the condition of it does look pretty good, but it is really, really, there's a lot of play there. So, either the tension has sort of failed, or, you know, the belt's stretched over time, because it's not always done on distance. This is done 44,000 miles. It's done on years as well. So, yeah probably fairly close call on that although it looks good so much play there next we're going to remove the tensioner pulley bolt 16 mil let me drop the camera i have to hold the engine with one arm so don't fall off the stands and then uh, push it with the other hand now remember this is a marathon not a sprint so what we're going to do is carefully remove the belt okay and we don't want to disturb the camshaft or the crankshaft. So I'm just going to take it gently off the pulley there. See now the pulley should should move. 
just going to slide it off ever so carefully. Some people will mark the belt itself, so then they can measure it up to the new belt and mark it. Uh, I'm not going to bother, if I'm honest. Turns out I probably should have bothered because on the new belt it didn't come with the two white lines because they're not perfectly symmetrical. Um, there's slightly more teeth on one side than the other. So next, without disturbing the cam, we're just going to remove the tensioner pulley. Next we have to remove the water pump, okay. There will be a bit of coolant spillage to get a container underneath. You won't be able to catch it all, but um, definitely you'll be able to get most of it. The 10 mil bolts. These should not be that stiff, but these ones of these ones are. Um, they should be 10 newton meters. Should be nice and easy. You can get most of them from the top. And the two bottom ones you have to go through the wheel arch. So a little tip and trick. Remove the two bottom ones. You can actually get the uh, one towards the firewall uh, from the top. Uh, remove the other one and then if you look on the right hand side of here where the ratchet currently is just below that there's another one they're the awkward ones and then leave the middle one there till last the easy one um, they are a bit annoying I have been on them for a while um, and it's pretty tight in there but um, they do eventually come out so that's it uh, all seven bolts off as you can see safely in the box but um it's not coming off. So what you might have to do, just give it a couple of love taps. Although the audio on this does sound like I'm hitting it pretty hard, I'm actually not. Um, I'm just using the rubber side of the mallet and it just comes out nice and easily. Right, so it's out now. So I don't know if this is normal, but the only way I could get it out was feed it down, through that gap there towards the firewall, right, down there, and then through that gap there, bit odd, but it's the only way I could get it out. <laughs> Just have a quick look at it. Hopefully, the surface on the other side's fairly clean. But all we're going to do is just give that a quick clean up now with a bit of rag. Now I pulled a little bit of deionized water through there uh, just to get the last little bit of coolant out. And the uh, surface is now clean. Um, so now what we're going to do is refit the water pump with the gasket. So there's the gasket on with the two uh, locating lugs and now we're going to get the water pump in. Getting really weird, had to uh, feed it over the axle and then through this little hole there to get it in there. Um, bit awkward, don't really understand why, um, but yeah, whatever, we'll roll now with it. The best part of the job is when you flick the ratchet overs to righty tighty. Right, get one in, yeah, tighten it up, not too much, um, and then just double check the alignment. They sh it should be completely aligned from the, uh, as in the water pump aligned from the studs, but it's just good to make sure. Unfortunately, my camera died, um, so talking about 10 new meters, and then we're going to tackle the belt. Thread it from the top, but then you're going to go uh, camshaft, run crankshaft, water pulley, over the cam, keeping it taut, and then run the tension pulley. Make sure you put the uh, tension pulley in. Check that both the timing marks still align, and any slack which comes off the bottom of the bell, the bottom um, crankshaft, um, push it towards the tensioner. Next, we're going to put the bolt on the tensioner. Next, um, we're just going to put these, uh, you get two prongs in there. Push the tensioner that way, show the old one. And then we're just going to tighten up the nut. And this stretch of the belt, you will use the harmonic, um, whatever it's called. And you'll be looking for 165, give or take 5 uh, hertz. Once you've got that figure, torque the nut to 10 newton meters. Spin the engine 10 times and check the timing marks still align. And then torque it up to 50 newton meters. Sorry, uh, me again. Uh, I basically, in the end, the my tool snapped, so I wedged a spanner underneath the tensioner uh, to prop it up whilst I then tightened up the bolt and then checked the uh, the readings on my iPhone. Fit the mountain bracket uh, with the five uh, bolts, two of them are five eighths, the top ones. Then put the bottom cover on, put the crankshaft pulley on, and then the belt back on uh, in reverse of what you did earlier. 
uh, this needs to get torqued to 40 Nm plus 70 degrees. Unfortunately, the only way you're going to be able to do that is by putting the wheel back on, jacking it down, putting the, the wheel all the way to hard right to give you access, put a torque wrench in there whilst in fifth gear and someone steps on the brake. The engine mounts on as well and then we're going to be making sure that the radiator bottom hose is on and then top up the coolant. Sorry, uh, the camera died. But all you're going to do now is once that screw's undone slightly, you'll start seeing water coming through that screw cap. Um, let it run. Do the screw back up. You'll see the coolant drop. That's absolutely fine. Um, that's just the um, air and all that coming through. Put the heater on max chat. And then all you're going to do is wait for the electric fan to come on once two three times okay it might take 15 20 minutes at idle but that's fine and um, that will also tell you if you've done the timing belt correctly now if you like this sort of content and you, you've got one of these cars please check out the playlist in the comments um with some of the tools i've used as well there'll be links for them and if you've got any questions please put them in the comments section and i'll see you on the next one